The first thing we need to talk about in SPSS and introduction is setting up and getting ready to do the work. To do that, however, we need to take a minute and talk about versions, editions, and modules, which all refer to different kinds of things in SPSS. The choice is really making me think of an overwhelming plethora of possibilities ahead of you, and it's nice to break it down a little bit. So the things we're going to talk about are versions, those are the release updates, the you know, version one, version two. Editions, those vary according to what's included in a particular purchase. And modules are extra functions that you can get to add on to the abilities of SPSS. We'll start by talking about versions. Version one came out in 1968, and at that point it was called Statistical Package for the Social Sciences, SPSS. Version 24 came out in 2016, and now it's called IBM SPSS Statistics. They act like SPSS doesn't stand for anything. Now, for this course, I'm using version 22 on a Macintosh computer. Fortunately, there haven't been any extraordinarily major changes between 22 and 24, and everything I'm going to show you in this course will work just fine in almost any other version of SPSS. Now, it is possible that you've heard of something called PASW at some point. And SPSS was briefly called Predictive Analytics Software during a trademark dispute after SPSS got bought by IBM. But that only lasted for a year or so, and it got resolved. The important thing to know is that no matter what version you're using, the files generally are highly compatible between versions. And so code that you created in version 16 is probably readable in version 24. There are some backwards compatibility issues for advanced functions like automatic modeling and so on. But most of it is consistent all the way through. Now we also need to talk about additions of SPSS. And there are a few major choices here. There's the base edition, the standard edition, the professional edition, and the premium edition. And they differ by price, and they differ by the functions that are included with each edition. So for example, in base, you get basic statistics, you get linear regression, you get clustering and factor analysis. On the other hand, standard adds on to that logistic regression, generalized linear models, and survival analysis. It also adds drag and drop interactive tables. The professional edition adds to that data prep, forecasting, decision trees, and imputation methods. And then finally, the top of the line premium edition of SPSS adds bootstrapping, complex sampling, exact tests, and structural equation modeling. And so each one adds on a number of other functions. Now, this is the product pricing as of August of 2016. And you see, for instance, that SPSS starts in the base at $1,170 per year per person. So it's an annual license. And it goes all the way up to nearly $8,000 per user per year. And so it gets really expensive. However, I want to say this, don't panic. There are other ways aside from having to like, you know, sell your house to get SPSS. Number one, there is a free trial and you can download SPSS and you can try it for 14 days. And during that time, the best way to do this is see if you can make a business case and get somebody else to buy it for you. There is also academic pricing. Student pricing for SPSS starts at $35 for six months. It's not the super duper version, but it is absolutely sufficient for doing the majority of academic research. Now, we also need to talk about modules. And these are the components that add extra functionality to SPSS. And they're the things that differentiate the different editions primarily. Modules of, rephrase, the available modules include advanced statistics, bootstrapping, categories, complex samples, conjoint, custom tables, data preparation, Decision trees, direct marketing, exact tests, forecasting, missing values, neural networks, and regression. So that's 14 additional modules. And that sounds like a lot, but if you can compare it to the 9,000 packages that are available for R, well, there's a difference there. The other major difference is that these packages, they cost money. 
So you need to work that into your budget. On the other hand, there are also free plugins that make it possible to use code in R, Python, Java, and the Microsoft.NET framework within SPSS. And so there are abilities that you can add depending on what you need. In sum, we can say this. SPSS has a long history as far as statistical software goes. There are several variations and additional, rephrase, there are several variations and additions that you can make to it by adding extra modules. On the other hand, it can be very pricey, so it's something to consider when you're doing the cost-benefit analysis of SPSS.